I'm Jenny Lamb with Lamb Farm Designs and welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to do an introductory video on what I use every day when I quilt and also how I manage and organize a block of the month program or this is a block of the week. How do I keep track of my fabric? How do I keep it neat so I'm not pressing every time I have to get back into that one piece from six months ago? So I'm just gonna kind of walk through how I set it up and my favorite tools that I use. Now, I know that there's a lot of tools out there. I'd love it if you put in comments something that I didn't mention, your favorite tools, a favorite method that you have, that would be wonderful because I don't branch out on my box very often and I kind of just do what works for me over and over and I do a lot of sewing, so um, I kind of just do the same thing over and over. But it works for me, so I wanted to show you my favorite tools and tips and tricks. And I am doing a collaboration with Reb's Fab Stash for my new book, Pacific Northwest Life. I will show you a copy of the book, but I'm filming this a little early so that I can be ready when, when the sew along starts in September, the first week of September. And the books are, are getting edited right now. So um, go ahead and join us. This is, this is for people who are doing the, the sew along and for people who aren't. People that just want to look at my channel and see kind of my groove and how I do things. So the first thing I want to show you is my favorite rulers that I use. Now, I don't, it doesn't matter what brand of rulers you use. I'm just showing you what I use. And I love the Quilter Select because they have a little bit of non-grip on the back. And it, it doesn't cling so much to your mat, but it really clings to your fabric. And I find you don't have to put so much pressure on your fingers to keep your ruler from slipping, especially if you're doing a long cut. And I know a lot of people will cut and they'll put their hand back here and stop and then continue. That doesn't work for me. My ruler wiggles somehow, probably because I don't pause enough. So these rulers work great for me. The other thing I really like about them is they have a really fine lines. So I can really get down and know that my piece is two and a half or whatever I need to cut. So I like to have a six by 24. And then I like a couple of the shorter rulers. I have the six by 12 and the three by 12. Um, these are my favorite but I do recommend you at least have at least a six inch ruler and a 12 inch ruler for this pro project. So I also recommend that you have some sort of a ruler that you can cut squares with. Um, I have the Quilter Select ruler. I don't always use it unless I'm cutting a bigger square. You can see that this six inch bias square ruler by that patchwork place is my favorite. You can't get these anymore. I've had it for close to 30 years and I have, um, pretty much worn off my marking. So you can tell that, that I really use this a lot. This works great also, but something with a bias, this is on the 45, this has a bias square, something you can cut your squares out with. You do make triangle and a square units for this quilt, for the juniper trees, you're gonna make nine of them. The templates are in the book that you can cut out, or trace on template plastic if you want. But I recommend the Tri-Rec tools uh, they're really handy and they go from a one and a half inch to six. So a one inch finished to a six inch finished triangle in a square. I'll be demonstrating how to use these rulers when we get to the juniper block, when we're making it in that week of the sew along. But I really like these rulers. You can also use, there's lots of rulers on the market. Um, you can also use the block lock ruler for this. The difference with the block lock and the tri -rec is the tri -rec gives you all the sizes between one and six inch finish size. And the block lock, you need to buy that particular size. You, in the cutting directions in the book, you have both cutting directions for using the templates or the tri -rec and the uh, block lock ruler, if you happen to have that. I don't have any trouble with these coming out the right size and feel the need to square up. So the tri -recs work just fine for me. So the other ruler I recommend you have, and I like the six and a half inch size, although it comes in about every increment, half inch increment, is the Block Lock Half Square Triangle Ruler. Um, it's got a gutter on the back that's cut out, so it fits right over your seam allowance of your half square triangle. And that way you're not trying to line your bias up on, on it. It just locks onto your seam, and then you can slide it this way or that. And I'll demonstrate how to use this when you're making half square triangles in the sew along. And then you just need a good rotary cutter. You can go with any size you want. I like the 45 millimeter. 
I also have, I think it's 30 maybe or smaller that I use uh, when I'm cutting using the block lock or small rulers because I kind of get crazy when I'm cutting. And if I'm using a big rotary cutter, I tend to trim off and shave my plastic rulers down. So I like to use the little rotary for that. And then it also comes in handy to have a small cutting mat that you can keep at your station. And then I go ahead and use my, my small rotary for that. So now I'm going to show you the other notions and tools that I use. We got through the, the rulers and the mats and the rotary. So now I want to show you some little things that I use that just kind of make it easier for me. So one thing I like to do is I like to have a small pair of embroidery scissors or thread snips at my machine, but you're also going to need another pair of scissors, you know, whichever kind you like to use when you're trimming your flipped corners. You can use your rotary if you want. Also, you need to have a good pin cushion. I love this one. I don't pin very often, but I do pin when I'm putting my blocks together. And then I really prefer the Aurafil 50 weight, 100% cotton thread. That's just my choice. I buy it on, by the cone for my machine. And this is the color I'll be using for this sew along because the background's pretty light. But you know, they, they make the Aurafil in these sizes also. These are a little dark for this. I wouldn't recommend them. And then I really love, you can see that my dog chewed this up. You could <laughs> really chewed it up. But I really love the Acorn Precision piecing products. So I use the glue and here's just a refill for it because I, I only like my bottle about half full. It seems to clog less. If it clogs, just run a pin through backwards. And then I really like the pressing pen. And this is the solution that I put in it. I've been working on this bottle of, of solution and I make a lot of quilts a year for over a year. So it lasts a really long time. You can buy these at your local quilt shop. You can see that I've also used my pen a lot and worn it off. And I'll be demonstrating how to use this during the sew along. And then I also really like a mister bottle and I like to uh, lightly starch my fabric. I don't wet it down and let it sun dry. Do what you want. But I uh, just mist my fabric and I put a little light starch on it just to kind of lock my the, the wovenness of the fabric together. And then I don't have to worry about it so much because we're working with a lot of, of bias pieces ultimately. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is, is how I keep my blocks organized during the process and how I keep my fabric organized, especially for a block of the year because you're gonna be getting fabric in every month for a year. This is a block of the week, but you're gonna get your fabric once a month for the whole month. So what I like to do is I already talked to you about pressing. I like to press my fabrics with a light starch on it, both sides, uh, both sides in a fold, just the right side of the fabric. And then your fabric's gonna come all labeled with the, with the name of the fabric and the SKU number. And what you're gonna get in your first month's kit is you're, you're gonna get this swatch page and it's gonna help you keep your, your fabrics organized as you go. So as I make my first cut, I usually just use the salvage and I use, uh, I just use one of these little um, snail's trail for scrapbooking. And I just run a little, little strip of glue down there and then stick a little piece of my fabric on it. That way later, if I need to find a fabric in here because I need just a little bit of it and I didn't get it that, that week or that month, then I can go ahead and figure out which fabric it is. I've got it labeled, I've got the name, I've got the skew, and then I can easily find it in here. I also like to line my fabrics up on a cookie sheet, a large cookie sheet. Just got it at Cash and Carry. I don't think it's even called Cash and Carry anymore, but you can get them on Amazon or whatever. And that way I, I know it's already starched on here and I don't have to restarch my fabric or re-iron it. It stays pretty neat for the whole year. Plus it's, a, it's easy to store it. It's really slim. I can fit it under a bed, under a cabinet and get it out of the way when I'm not using it. And then the last thing I recommend that you have is a little project board and alpha bitties. Um, these work great. That way when you're cutting out your blocks, you can lay them on a board, transport them around, and you can label them with the alpha bitties. Use a scrap of paper, use bind binder clips with the alpha bitties if you want, if you're cutting out ahead of time. But that really helps because if you label these, you're gonna be able to work through my patterns so much quicker and so much easier if you have them all labeled. And then you can just pick up the piece you need and go from there. 
The only last thing that I recommend that you have, and it's set up over at my sewing machine, is I have a little pressing mat, a little wool pressing mat, and a mini iron set up right there. So that as I'm sewing, once I get to this point, the cutout point, I can just sit at my machine, sew, snip, press, and it all just goes pretty smooth. Um, I'm also going to show you as I'm going along how to use leaders and enders because this is a project that you're not going to be chain piecing a lot. So that will help reduce the thread that you use and the knots in the back of your piecing. If you're interested in following along with your own kit or your own block of the month program, please uh, see repsfabstash.com. Any of these products that I showed today, you can also get there. The link will be at the bottom. Also, if you um, enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to have a couple different things going on. I'll have the weekly sew along for the Pacific Northwest quilt, but then I'll also have um, some just general tips and tricks and how I use the starch pen and how I how I make flying geese and how I how I quilt and what I do. So please follow along if you're interested. Please see the, the um, captions below so that you can get any of the products that I showed here. You can join the block of the month. It's offered as a, actually it's offered as a block of the week, but you'll be getting your fabric once a month. I also didn't tell you how this was gonna run, but this is gonna be a week off every month so that you have a catch up week. So three or four weeks, depending on how the, the month falls, three or four weeks, you'll be making blocks out of the book. And then one week will give you a catch up week so that maybe you can stay on track. If you don't stay on track, any progress is progress. Doesn't matter. But um, if you're interested, go ahead and go to rebsfabstash.com and sign up for the kit or the block of the month. Thanks so much for watching my channel. I really appreciate it.